My name is Amata and this Red Gaming Tech video I am here with the latest tech news from, you guessed it, the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today? Well, I have for you a brand new patch from Intel which addresses Spectre and Meltdown and we also have an announcement from Gigabyte regarding some notebooks which come paired with Intel Coffee Lake H. We also have AMD Ryzen 5 2400G synthetic and gaming benchmarks and I'll get to that of course later on. We also have a console piece as we have some very interesting comments from a developer regarding PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR and we have some rumours regarding Left 4 Dead as it may seem that Valve knows how to count to three after all. So let's kick things off with Spectre shall we? Now I'm not going to go into the Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities, they are nothing short of infamous at this point and well deservedly so, however you may recall recently the update to protect against Spectre and Meltdown was pulled from Windows as it was causing a bunch of system stability issues like random reboots and crashing and a bunch of stuff that was actually more harmful in the short term than the protections it gave. Obviously long term is better to have the update but short term it was giving people a lot of trouble. However, they have now, we have a new microcode which is obviously intended to be used against Spectre and Meltdown and it is being distributed to hardware companies so it can be included in the latest range of firmware updates. So we do have the update targeting Mobile Skylake and Mainstream Skylake so it doesn't fix Broadwell, Haswell, KB Lake, Skylake X, Coffee Lake or Skylake SP. However Intel does say that beta testing of other microcodes for these processes is on the way however they have released as I said, a new update for, again, Mobile Skylake and Mainstream Desktop Skylake. So there's still a lot left un you know, unprotected if you were having a bunch of issues and rolled back the update to not have this update anymore or what have you. But they are working on it, it seems. I mean, it's taken longer than I would have hoped. But, you know, hopefully you've got the patch and it's not causing you any issues. But if you were, they do have, obviously, some systems now being protected but obviously if you're on the cable lake sky lake x coffee lake etc then you're gonna have to wait unfortunately but they are on the case at least and you can find all this detailed in their security issue update which of course will be linked in the description below so let's stay on intel for a moment as gigabyte have an announcement for us and this is a bit of a quick one but you may recall that intel did promise a Coffee Lake sort of range for notebooks, but at the moment we only have some really low power SKUs available. So if you're interested in something a bit meatier, then there's not really that option available if you're wanting to go with Coffee Lake. However, a Gigabyte representative has confirmed that there will be a new model with a refresh of the Intel 8th gen processor towards the end of March or early April of this year. So it seems we will be getting more Coffee Lake H notebooks fairly soon. Of course, we don't have to wait all that long to figure out how true this is, so we're going to have to wait and see. But hopefully it is true, because obviously people who've been perhaps waiting for some you know, higher-end notebooks that use Coffee Lake, it's kind of been like, well, where is it? You know, I kind of want something that's actually going to you know, have some actual power behind it, and some actual clout, some actual weight, if you will. So, you know, fingers crossed it's true, but we'll see. Anyway, let's move on to the Ryzen 5 2400G. Now, as I mentioned in my intro to this video, we have synthetic and gaming benchmarks for the 2400G and the original video surfaced on a website by the name of 365YG.com. So if you want to give the original video a watch, I will link it in the description below for your perusal. I suggest you do so if you're at all interested, but of course, there will be screen grabs from all the relevant bits in the video itself. So... What do we have? Well, we have Time Spy, Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme, 3D Mark, and Cinebench benchmarks. And you may re remember the video I did yesterday. I know you have to stretch your memory quite far to be like, oh, yesterday, what did I do yesterday? I don't know. But seriously, it does kind of line up with the benches that we saw yesterday, and it does give us a more complete picture of the performance of this particular APU. It puts it around the sort of RX 550 to 560 range in terms of graphics cards, which isn't too shabby to be honest, considering it is an APU. CPU wise, however, we're looking at a chip which is going to be slightly faster than the Ryzen 5 1500X. So overall, 
some pretty impressive performance as you'll be seeing on screen with the various screenshots. So again, while these aren't like, you know, game benchmarks like say, hey, here's it running on Rise of the Tomb Raider's benchmark, or here's it running on GTA 5's benchmark, or whatever, we do have gaming benchmarks, of course, again with Time Strike, Time Strike, Time Spy, Fire Strike, and Fire Strike Extreme, as of course synthetic with Cinebench and all that good stuff as well. So, just gives us a more complete picture of what to expect from the 2400G, and to be honest, it's looking pretty damn impressive, I must say, especially when you keep in mind the insanely cheap price for the Ryzen 5, which is 169 US dollars. So, the price versus performance for this thing is pretty crazy. I mean, obviously, you know, I keep making this joke, but it, it's because it works. It'll be playing Witcher 3 or 4K anytime soon, but you are going to be pretty happy running most games at 1080p with most things cranked up, but obviously your mileage may vary when it comes to that. So let's move on to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR. I think most people would agree that while we're not going to be seeing the PlayStation 5 this year by any means, because obviously the PlayStation 4 Pro has not really been out all that long, obviously the vanilla PS4 has been out quite some time now, but the Pro is not all that old, so I doubt Sony would be doing it yet. We're probably looking at next year, maybe 2020 at the earliest. But of course, that is pure speculation. They could release it tomorrow for all I know. However, we do have some comments from the developer Harold Van Kohl, who is of Grab Games. And he was interviewed by the latest official PlayStation magazine here in the UK. And he basically said that he doesn't believe that the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation VR should be bundled together. So he's basically saying they shouldn't be bundled together. However, he does think that they would be essential when paired together. And he says, quote, Buying a new console is a big undertaking for a lot of people, and buying the headset that I think people want to see in the future of PlayStation can almost be like buying a new console. So having these purchases separated giving, gives each thing its own time to shine. However, PlayStation 5 and PSVR should be considered essential together. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of hype around VR and a lot of talk from people such as myself who get quite excited about new technology that it could have a lot of potential to be like the next big revolution in gaming. And obviously, we haven't really seen that happen. Obviously, the ones that we have on the market are good in their own ways, but I think the price is a lot for most people to handle, you know, especially if you're wanting to get a PC one. It's like, okay, not only do you need like a thousand dollar rig to run this thing properly, because obviously if you have a low frame rate, you're probably going to vomit all over your room. The gear itself is extremely expensive. So the cost has obviously kept a lot of people away and the lack of killer apps as well. But the cost of the hardware is slowly going down. And I think as we start to see like second generation, maybe even third generation VR, we'll start to see it picked up on a more mass scale. And... He did also touch on this as well, and he said, quote, a lot of VR experiences are just fundamentally different from the way we've all been used to playing, and that's really exciting. As the amount of great content goes up, the price of hardware goes down, which gets us to a sweet spot. I think the first generation of VR is approaching that sweet spot. Now, obviously, the PlayStation VR is probably the one that's doing the work, sort of the best out of the VR headsets available because obviously while it is limited limited by the platform, it is also the most sort of accessible price wise. You know, it's still expensive. It's not exactly cheap, but it is as he pointed out, the cost of a new console compared to the cost of the Oculus Rift or the Vive, it's actually quite manageable. You can save up for that in less than a human lifetime. So I can definitely see what he's saying there, and we have seen that reflected in the fact that the PlayStation VR has sold over two million units as of December 2017. So obviously we don't have any more up-to-date figures than that, but it has done really, really well. And it is the best-selling VR device, I think, purely because A, there's like a million squillion PlayStation 4s out there. So obviously that helps. And obviously it is the most cost-effective VR. So if you have a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 4 Pro, it's like, well, you know, I might as well jump on this VR thing now with the cheapest option available while still getting a decent experience. So let us finish with Left 4 Dead. It's become a bit of a meme at this point that Valve don't know how to count to three and, well, I can't really blame people for making that because it does kind of seem that way. However, I came across an interesting thread on reddit.com slash r slash games. And basically, if this is, well, this was submitted first of all by a user by the name of Gondile, and they say that if you look at the top bar of the official Left 4 Dead website, you'll notice a link to Facebook, and that clicking that will bring you to a Facebook page with a fellow by the name of Ted Carson, who is a developer for Valve, and his Facebook page features an image that resembles the Left 4 Dead art. However, if you look on screen, 
you'll see a hand that has three distinct fingers. So obviously the box art for Left 4 Dead 2 showed two fingers. So, you know, this is kind of following the logic of like, hey, the amount of fingers on the hand denotes which, you know, a version of this particular franchise it is. The background image, according to Gondar, was uploaded around 20 or so hours ago. And he was actually leaked, that being Ted Carson, as a developer of Left 4 Dead 3 as well. So while there's a leak, and this is obviously a rumour based upon a Facebook page which is linked from the website, let's all take this with a large pinch of salt, especially given that this is, you know, Valve counting to three. You know, that would probably be a sign of the end times. However, I think it's actually pretty cool if this would be the case. I think a lot of people would be like, what about Half-Life though? Half-Life though? But I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, okay, if we're getting this, then maybe there's not a, the hope isn't dead after all. And there's going to be quite a lot of people like, hey, this ain't Half-Life, but I'm still pretty damn happy to see Left 4 Dead continue because that series is uh, pretty damn fun. And, you know, Left 4 Dead 2 has been on sale like a billion times on Steam. So I think most people have played it more than enough and would happily welcome a new entry into that particular franchise. So this is not exactly the most concrete rumour ever, but it is an interesting rumour, and this would very much be up Valve's alley, this type of tease, like, hey, we're not actually saying we're going to do it, but we're very much hinting that we are, so let the rumour mill commence, and then just sitting back and just basking in the glory of the internet, basically. So make of it what you will. There's a link to the original Reddit thread in the description below where you can have a look at all of their links and stuff. Be way too long to link all of their links in the description below, so you're just going to find the Reddit link there as well. So, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.